Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The FIFA 23 market is rising because of one SBC that was dropped yesterday on a pretty crazy day two of the web app. And yes, that SBC is marquee matchups. We're gonna talk about how finally some tradable pack supply has brought coins onto the market and has made some player prices start to go up actually pretty considerable amounts. So we're gonna take a look at those price rises. And also with this SBC dropping, there have been some brand new trading methods discovered with gold rares, with silvers, because people are needing those cards to go and do SBCs. So I wanna take a look at parts of the market that are up and kind of present to you maybe some new trading methods that'll help you make some coins in this grindy stage of the web app cycle. So we're gonna talk about all that and what to expect today on a Friday, right? Usually Fridays are promo Fridays, but of course, we're not gonna have a promo. The game really isn't even fully out. Ones to watch isn't today, it's next Friday on the 30th. So what can we see today? I, th I have like one idea for that. It might start to get really quiet. That's the only problem. We'll talk about that and of course, some really interesting information about weekend league rewards yes i know that's also a few weeks away but weekend league rewards are technically in the code of the web app i feel like not a lot of people are talking about that after all the crazy market stuff and marquee matchups that was going on yesterday so we're going to cover that quickly at the end of this video as well some fifa 23 news but if you're excited to learn why the market is rising and talk about another day on the web app hit the thumbs up and of course subscribe if you're new let's go into detail about how marquee matchups drove prices on the market up and let's take a look at some price rises right off the bat and kunku right this is why it, in the past day or two i was telling you guys to hold some of these big value cards that maybe you had packed right and kunku was like thirty-five thousand coins yesterday and even on day one on wednesday of the web app he is now 65k and he's not the only card that's rising these these cards that are rising and a lot of the cards that are going up in value right now are the ones that people knew were way too stinking cheap for their own good and we knew they were going to go up it was a matter of when not a matter of you know like were they going to go up or not but look at some of these prices that have gone up right and kunku is 65k i looked him up on footwiz by the way footwiz footwiz has these like sold prices now uh footbin and footwiz now both have prices uh up for the the big market but you can see here on footwiz they've got a, like a sale by sale kind of like a log for the Nkunku prices. Yesterday around 6 p.m. content, Nkunku was 38K, 38, 39,000 coins. It took about an hour, but he started to rise. You can see 41K, 41, and then all of a sudden he's just shooting up 45, 50,000 coins, 55K, and now he is 60,000 coins continuing to rise as people are getting coins from doing the marquee matchups SBC. And this is what we were waiting on. This is really what we were hoping to see, something that would give out some tradable supply because when packs have tradable rewards, the market gets a little bit richer, especially in this stage of the game when there's so little supply and people just need coins. This is how they can get coins pretty easy because also this SBC is stinking cheap. It is 6,000 coins to do all four segments. You get a tradable 25K pack. You get a tradable small prime gold players pack, a prime mixed players pack, a small Electrum. Like these are some really, really solid packs. They're very easy to do. I think it might actually cost a little bit more than 6K uh, because some of the solutions are a bit messed up with like bronze cards and silver cards that actually sell for more than what they're showing on the solution. So, you know, let's say it's 10K to complete marquee matchups. It's very worth it. I mean, I packed one discard in form yesterday. Boom. All of that that I put in to get the SBC done is back. And then I packed a couple other cards. I definitely profited yesterday from marquee matchups. And I think most people are. And again, what they did and what a lot of people are doing after going and doing that SBC is going and buying cards. And that's why you're seeing these prices rise. Messi was 100K, he's now 150K. Vinny was 90K, he's now 120. And there's so many other cards on the middle tier, right? Holland was like 33, he's now 40,000 coins. Llorente was 20, he's now 27. Kunde is up like 5,000 coins. Edder Militao is up 15K. Neymar's up big. Mane is up like 20,000 coins. As you, as you take a look at these prices, you guys are noticing it, right? Yesterday, Ferland Mendy, I was looking at him a lot on a stream. He's 42K. He was 30,000 coins yesterday. So not all cards are done rising though. And that's the point that I want to make. Don't feel like you're missing out by not being able to buy cards right now. These, these cards are still very cheap, like 160K for Ronaldo, 65K for Nkunku. Um, you know, I, I Mbappe is still cheap at 900,000 coins. So a lot of these cards, yes, they are starting to rise, 
but don't feel like you're missing the boat because there are going to be a lot bigger price rises for these cards as we get closer and closer to, um, you know, moving into the full game when people are able to get on and open FIFA points and even get more coins uh, on this market. So yes, prices are going up, but don't be alarmed. Don't be scared. There's still a lot more rising to happen on some of these cards, but I just want to kind of point it out to you today and talk about you're seeing these prices go up. Just kind of talk about why this stuff is happening. Now, there's also plenty of cards that I think are still decently low. And I'm even sitting here right now with 36,000 coins and two Cancelos that are up 10K in value from where I bought them on my transfer list. And I'm even thinking about, you know, splashing the cash on a card like a Kings of the Coman, seeing how much Nkunku has gone up. You know, how are people going to be linking Nkunku in their team? Probably this guy is going to be the favorite to do that. And I believe that Kings of the Coman is up a little bit, 17K. What was he yesterday? Let's look at these sold prices and scroll down here. So Kingsley Coman was like 14 to 15,000 coins, it looks like. Yeah, 15K. Looks like about 15,000 coins for most of the day, the past two days. Only up 3,000 coins for a card that is a five-star skiller. And of course, with the Nkunku going up so much, so many people are going to want to have those guys in the team together, I think. So, you know, that's just kind of something. That's just something that you learn as watching the market for a while and you see cards going up. You think about, okay... How are people going to use this in Kunku? How are people going to link him with the new chemistry system? What's going to be their first kind of card to go and link him with? I feel like that Coman would be one of those. So that's kind of my thought process there. And not seeing him go up that much yet still makes me realize there's some potential profit there. And there's so many other potential profit with so many other cards out here. You know, Militao, 53K. I think he still has another 20 or 30K to go. I think Cancelo has another 20 or 30K to go. You know, Kempembe is still pretty cheap at 20,000 coins. He's not up that much. So a lot of these players are higher rated ones that still have room to rise. If you're buying Conte at 60K instead of 50K, that's fine. Like he's still going to go up a lot more in the coming days. But this is the beginning of that market rise since there just been there have been more coins inserted onto the market via these tradable packs. Now, let's talk a little bit about trading and with these filters and why marquee matchups is making it just a little bit easier to trade. It is still very grindy, right? It's still tough to make coins right now. But since the marquee matchups SBC, especially that English versus uh, or England versus Germany SBC is probably the hardest one to get done. And some people actually have had issues submitting this. Now, if you've had issues submitting this challenge, uh, what I can tell you is, let me look at a solution here to make this look easier. Um, what the issue is with this, it's a little bit bugged, is this middle center mid spot right here in, the, in this uh, five back formation, the middle center mid spot is not counting its glitch for chemistry. So if you have enough chemistry, which I believe the squad asks for 26, if you have like enough chemistry through the rest of your squad to have above 26 chem, you can still have a player here in the middle. It, the SBC is just not counting that player's chemistry. So basically try to get 26 chemistry throughout the rest of your team, not counting that middle center mid spot, and you should be able to submit that SBC and get it done. A lot of people were figuring that out yesterday, a couple hours after the SBC was released. There was a post on Reddit, shout out Reddit, uh, kind of talking about that. So that's the issue there. It's not 100% glitched. It's just there's a slight workaround. It's just weird. Uh, but again, more issues on the web app yesterday on day two as well, which I guess, are we surprised? I don't know. But again, like I said, trading methods building, building around this. Like one card that we bought yesterday on stream right away was Robin Goosen's because we saw that there was a five back formation. German and English players were required. Robin Goosen's was like 800 coins. And he went all the way up to about 1.8, 1.9 K. And right now he's about 1.4, 1.5 K again. Uh, and he's down a little bit. I think as people are kind of, it's nighttime right now. The demand for this SBC is going away and more SP, and more people have gotten the SBC done. But, you know, you see this guy dropping back down again. And this is a card that yesterday was not selling for this much. So, you know, cards like this have gone up. A lot of your German gold rares, your English gold rares, that's what I'd be telling you guys to look at right now. Basically filter through your top leagues and your top nations. Like let's look at Premier League strikers. Um, even if it's needed for teams that people are starting to build or SBCs, gold rares are a really good place to be sniping because number one, you know, these cards are selling for above their, their discard value, right? All gold rare strikers in the Prem, as you can see right now, are 1,100 coins basically. And there's so many players that you could get under this sniping filter, right? If I look at 1,100 coins, that's what's selling there. Mitrovic, Antonio, there's Dennis, another card there. 
Um, let's see, do we have anybody else that's selling here at 1100 coins? Not that these cards are used that much for SBCs, but more so they're needed. Um, I, I guess people are buying them to do an SBC or two, but more so maybe even just to put in their team. But this is what you're looking for when you're trying to find a trading method. You're just looking for cards that sell for a little bit extra that you can make some coins on. Also look at center mid position changes because these are selling for a little bit more as well. Look at Premier League center mids, gold rares selling at one point. Is that going to sell right there? Benton core? I think, yeah, for sure. 1.4K and you've got Nabi Keita, you've got Ericsson. You got a lot of center mids. Looks like selling at about 1.4. Again, these are great sniping filters because there's so many Prem Center mids that people are packing. So like we said, with these tradable pack rewards, that just means there's gonna be snipes popping up on the market. And that's why working these sniping filters for gold rares is gonna be profitable. It's still a grind, right? Because you're like, okay, Nate, I'm sniping these cards at like 1K and then trying to sell them at 1.4. That's really grindy. It is, but it's profit and it's kind of, you know, that's that's what we're going to have to trade with in these next couple of days before we actually get gameplay and more of that demand in there. We're going to have to trade around the SBC demand. And whenever SBCs are dropped, especially if they have tradable rewards, you're going to want to look for the requirements of those to find cards that continue to go up in price because people will be buying them for sure. Now, also, there are silvers that are moving on the market decently well. Different nation, uh, different nationality of silvers like, you know, they don't move that much. Um, or, or sorry, they're on smaller budgets. That's probably the better way to say it, right? Silver rares uh, are, are doing pretty well. They sell a little bit redder, better than silver commons. You can see like silver rare strikers sell for 900 that are French here. And instead of the commons that we just looked at, we're selling for like 500. So circle through some of these popular nations as well. Like the, uh, boom, there's a, is that a snipe right there? Hold up, let me check. Okay, it's not. But like English silver rare strikers selling for a thousand coins. People might be opening their packs for marquee matchups yesterday and accidentally list one of these guys for 500 coins. Boom. That sort of thing is what you can find a lot of snipes on right now. Filter through a lot of, honestly, just filters. But look for the rare cards because those seem to be the bronze rares, the silver rares, the gold rares. Those are the filters and the methods that are kind of working the best from my experience, let's do one more filter for you guys. Let's go gold, rare, and then center mid. I've, I've seen this work really, really well. Gold, rare, center mids from the nationality of Germany. I think these are selling for like 2,000 coins or somewhere around there. Again, these are selling because of the marquee matchups demand. Actually, they're down a little bit. Yeah, they're down a little bit here too. These were at 2.2K yesterday. Now they're about at 1.5, 1.2. Four. So again, a lot of players can pop up under this. That's why it's a great sniping filter. Plenty of chances to see a player pop up. So again, still very grindy methods, but potential for, for profit. And there's more demand for these cards. Um, and since people are doing that marquee matchup SBC, it's really good to trade with some of this stuff. So it's made trading just a little bit easier on the market in some of those areas. Now, also where it's made trading a little bit easier is since people are opening tradable packs, some of these cards... Uh, like, this is one of my favorite cards to flip right now. Sergi Dardare. How much is he going for? He's going for like 2.5, 2.6K. This is a card that a lot of people want for their starter teams, right? Also, he's 82 rated and he's only 2,000 coins. He's getting packed a decent amount. So what I've found to be very profitable as well is since people are opening these tradable packs, they're packing cards like this and just listing them up on the market, sometimes undercutting by a few hundred coins just to get the sale, right? Or just to get the card out and get some coins. People do that, even though it doesn't make sense all the time. People do that. And this is a great way to find snipes is literally just kind of circle through and cycle through some players that you think people are buying for their starter teams. Uh, like this Abanez was the guy that I was trading with. The Kalulu card that was extinct at 5,000 coins. He's now like 2K or 2,500. He actually dropped off a lot. Yeah, he's still dropping, which is kind of crazy. Really good card, really good links, and he's 2.5K. But like this is a card that was getting packed a lot, of course, from marquee matchups. So, you know, you have that supply hitting the market. People are packing cards, listing them up. So it's great to snipe on those lower rated cards uh, that people are still maybe putting in their starter teams or that maybe sell for SBCs, a combination of everything. Uh, like this Rosier card was 5K yesterday. And after marquee matchups came out, again, it's just a another testament to this market not having much supply. This dude went all, dude, he's 2K. This, this guy was 5K yesterday. And now he is under 2000 coins as a French rare right back, right? So that's pretty crazy. This guy will definitely go up in the future for SBCs. 
um, because he's like one of the only French rare right backs. It's really cheap. That's something pretty good to notice. And again, we're going to start to learn stuff like that as we get more and more SBCs released on this game. Like today, we learned about some English cards are going to go up, gold rares. And again, as you're trying to snipe cards and figuring out what people, and maybe you're looking for some sniping filters as well, remember what the the formations are in these SBCs, right? That, Like I said, I, we went to Goosens right away after the England versus Germany SBC was dropped because in this SBC, there's a left wing back and a right wing back formation and Goosens is a left wing back by default position. It's all about those default positions because the position change cards are about 2000 coins a piece. So people aren't using them too much or going and buying them too much. Um, they go up and they move a little bit in price, but it's way easier if you just buy the player in that exact position so that's why you see some of those cards move on the market so hopefully that's pretty helpful because i know a lot of us are still trying to grind and make coins and you know it's it, it's tough still I'm, I'm not gonna beat around the bush it is very tough to make coins still on the market the flips are small they're hard they're tough but it's worth the grind and it, this sbc yesterday gave us more opportunity to make some coins last thing i'll show you with making some coins just finding random golds to snipe check this out players fifa 23 players on footbin let's search uh search by all gold rares and then we're going to go to price minimum price a thousand coins and then we're going to filter by price and then you're going to click the price button twice so you see all these cards that are selling at a 1000 coins all of these guys are getting packed so much from oh okay footbin air nice Again, flip and air, that's weird. I did this like two minutes ago and it wasn't doing that. But all these cards are getting packed a lot from the marquee matchups, SBCs, and people are selling them, right? But you can go through this list and when it lets you go to the next page, I guess. And then you can find cards that are selling for over a thousand coins and maybe go to and try to find some sniping filters or just try to snipe these cards individually. So I know it's a lot of talk about marquee ma matchups, a lot of talk about the market, but high tier player prices are rising because people are just getting more coins and they're going and investing in these players because they know they're too cheap and they know that they're going to rise. So that's why those prices are going up. And again, it's a little bit easier to make coins with those SBCs that were released for marquee matchups. Now, let's talk today on Friday because the question again is, what's going to happen today on the game? What's going to happen today on a Friday where we're really not expecting that much content? I'm I'm not expecting, I hate to say it, but there, it might be a day without content, which would be a, a big bummer. And I think a lot of people are hoping for some other sort of random SBC. I mean, the only piece of content that I really feel like we could be getting today would be some sort of like one-off SBC, like welcome to foot 23 SBC or something like that. I don't expect a promo today. I mean, literally that's impossible that we get a promo. Once to watch is the first promo and EA said in the pitch notes that that's going to start on the 30th of September on the full game launch, full game release. So today might be a pretty quiet Friday, which would actually lend a favor to prices on the market going up a little bit more. Um, again, as people are maybe doing marquee matchups, getting a few more coins, going out and buying these cards, and there's really not going to be any other supply on the market besides the preview packs. Every day, preview packs are going to be interesting to keep an eye on. About an hour after content is when most people are opening those up, and that does bring a little bit of supply on the market for some of your players, 10K and above, just because if you pack a player above 10K in a preview pack, you're going to buy the preview pack, buy that player, or, or sorry, buy that pack, and then sell the player to profit off of it, right? So there'll be a little bit of supply every day from stuff like that, but not a ton, and it's not going to be crazy on the market, but that's just something to watch out for. If there's no content today, watch players on the market most likely rising a little bit higher even than where they are going right now. And you're still going to see fluctuation, right? And Cuckoo might go down to 60K again, but he's also probably going to near 75, 80,000 coins by the end of the weekend. I, I really think that for a lot of these gold cards, the only way is up because EA is not going to release a lot of content and there's more and more coins coming on the game with marquee matchups. And if they release any more SBCs, with tradable packs that would just continue that trend so i'm not expecting too much today for a friday on fifa now last couple things to end this video off what i want to point out about some of the glitches from yesterday we talked about the marquee matchup glitch we know about that one um a lot of you guys were struggling with the foundation three i mean i haven't done this spc yet or i'd be struggling with it too but this better build up spc there's a way to get around it, I believe. This video on Twitter, which was retweeted by, I believe it was like uh, Foot Sheriff, it shows here in this video that if you, he said, if you, a way to solve it is to buy a center defensive mid instead of a center mid and swap him into the middle center mid position quickly and then 
quickly press submit. So what you're trying to do here is kind of like glitch the SBC out on itself. So you put a center mid in there, then you put a CDM in, and then you submit it right there. Uh, and then I think it's good to go. Although as I'm looking at this, I think they just changed the SBC. And this position is now a center defensive mid instead of a center mid. And that's kind of what that video was showing. So I think EA might have just fixed this uh, very recently. And now uh, it is it is actually working. So that's something there that maybe if you were unable to complete that before, now you will be able to. EA FIFA Direct tweeted about Nakata's player items being incorrect. This might be a first time ever in FIFA history this has happened, by the way. So they released Nakata's foot hero card with the wrong league. It was supposed to be Serie A, but they released it as Prem. And look what they're doing to compensate for this. The item has been updated with the correct Serie A league. Players who got the incorrect item from the transfer market will be returned their coins in the near future and contacted in game. So if you bought the card off the transfer market, they're going to let you keep the card, it sounds like, with the updated Serie A uh, league. And then you're going to be able to get your coins back as well. I don't know if EA has ever done a direct coin compensation, like return of your coins to you in this sort of situation. Usually they just like give you another card or, or something like that. This one is really, really interesting to me because that's not how EA usually fix this sort of situation. Maybe they're doing it this way right now because it's the early game, but I thought that was something uh, pretty interesting to note. And of course, if we take a look at Nakata on the market, it said here as well that some of them are going to show up as Premier League items still. Uh, but I think these Premier League ones that are shown here have been listed up before the change was made. And of course, you see now him with the Serie A logo on that card. I think it says here, uh, it says some instances of these two will display incorrect on the transfer market. These items will automatically update when they are obtained or added to transfer targets. So that's there. Pretty crazy. Uh, Lucio was released with the incorrect league as well. He is Serie A, not Bundesliga. So that was a change as well. Same thing with the coins getting returned. That's pretty crazy uh, with that. And then EA posted a whole big social board about all the stuff that's going on. They have this thing called like an EA FIFA tracker. They tweet this out sometimes about people unable to complete SBC. So they're, all the stuff we were uh, dealing with yesterday uh, is, is being fixed, I guess, is what it sounds like. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk about are those weekend league rewards that I mentioned. Um, in the back end of like the code, I guess, um, in the web app, it says that foot champions will start on Friday, October 7th at 7 a.m. GMT. It will end Monday at 7 a.m. So it's the usual schedule for weekend league as it is in the code of the web app right now, which is a bit of a bummer. I was hoping they'd change it. And then also here's the rewards. I mean, I'll drop a link to this tweet down in the description if you want to check it out. Um, you know, it's it looks like very similar to rewards as last year, I believe. Uh, except I almost feel like there's more tiers, but it does not take a lot of wins to get a team of the week pack. Again, at tier six, you get 25K coins, a 50K, a 100K, and a premium team of the week pack. So yeah, so we'll probably get some more information on weekend league stuff here pretty soon, but I thought that was pretty interesting. Then we also got a lot of information about leaked World Cup items. Again, about um, almost two months away, a little bit less than two months away from the World Cup. It's coming fast, but I'm sure we'll get a lot more leaks and a lot more information on the World Cup stuff as we get closer to that time frame. So again, I just wanted to give you guys a big update on the market today and talk through things from day two of the web app. Hopefully day three today, hopefully they spice it up. And hopefully you guys have still been making some coins through the trading methods or Hopefully the ones we talked about today will help you get some more coins heading into this weekend and maybe allow you to maybe purchase another high tier card, uh, higher rated. Remember, if you're trying to invest in any of these cards for a more and a further rise, higher rated. And honestly, the ones that you know people will be putting in their teams for meta and just overpowered purposes and just popular purposes on this game. Informs are going up a little bit too. Those are great cards to look at. But a lot of these gold cards, just pick the meta ones and you'll be just fine and see some more rises most likely through this weekend. So we'll see what Friday has to bring for us. We'll be live streaming on Twitch. Link down below in the description. If anything crazy happens, we will be there to analyze it and to take part in whatever kind of content we'll get today on our Friday. But if you enjoyed the video, smash a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions or subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the Good Account and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.